All right, so welcome back to Tales from the Flipside. This is Comic Shop Talk, where we're talking about setting up your comic shop. Uh, business beginning to end. I think we're on episode 30 or something like that now. Uh, you can go back and catch all the other episodes. But this episode, last episode, we talked about getting your piece of property, uh, getting your building, uh, your storefront. And what we're going to talk about today is once you have your, uh, your building, setting it up. How do I set my building up? Where do I put my uh, comics? Where do I put my other stuff, my apparel? How do I set it up? Well, there's a lot of different things to do with that. That is about your distance from that you can get through. In New York State, you need 28 inches. When you're setting it up, if you use a, a website, there's a really good website called Fit Small Business that has a downloadable app on your computer that allows you to set up your retail store. You put in your measurements and then you can figure out where you wanna put your cash register, where you wanna put your glass cases, where you wanna put your comics. Contact your local building inspector, find out what measurements you need for that so that when you're setting it up in the layouts, that you can do the measurements so that you're going to be correct about how it is set up. Because the worst thing you want to do is set up your store, have your building inspector come to uh, give you your uh, occupancy, your uh, approved occupancy. And he say, you know, this is not wide enough. And now you've bought stuff and put stuff and now you're going to have to figure out how to move stuff and rework it. And it won't be what you uh, originally planned on. So again, we talk about this several times, do due diligence, make sure you're uh, checking with your building inspector what needs to be the ADA applied rule uh, on size of aisles. Using this tool online will help you figure out what you're gonna need too. And you, know, you don't wanna overbuy, you don't wanna underbuy. So you can also figure out what you're gonna need to fill your store up. You know, do the measurements right, come in. I have a lot of like nooks and crannies and I didn't do this, but I suggest that you do because we've remodeled a lot. <laughs> we have remodeled so much. Uh, and we're actually about to go through another one. Uh, I think I talked about this on another video. We're going to change the rows on our, we're gonna move them in the same direction as the rest of the store. One, we're gonna have a better eye on everybody. Because once people get over into this area, uh, we really can't see them and we can only see the tops of their heads on the cameras. So if we shift the aisles the opposite direction, our cameras will show right down and plus it's easier to see from the cash register. We have some had some theft problems, um, mostly not really theft problems, but um, changing prices, uh, which is really difficult in the comics because there's a whole big complaint about, oh, I don't want you looking up my book when you come to the come to the counter. There's a, like a lot of people that hate that. Well, the reason why a lot of places do it is because there is a lot of changing of prices, shifting like one bag and board to another bag and board. So that's an issue. And the only way we can solve that is to change the direction so that we can see everybody when they're looking through the comics. It won't be perfect, it'll just be better. The other thing you wanna uh, think about uh, is when you're setting up your store is uh, and we're gonna go into that more in depth, is your camera positioning. So, setting up cameras. It's a two-man job, really. You wanna get uh, a buddy or one of your employees or a family member to come out and help you. You wanna get up on your camera and you wanna see where there's blind spots. Have them walk around the store, uh, hitting different marks. And when they disappear from your line of sight, if you're up by the camera, that lets you know you're gonna need a camera in, a, in another location to catch that area. We have an entire area called the library, which it has racks all the way around it and a big table and a million and a half magic cards in there that people can go through. Uh, but uh, currently we have to add a camera because we don't have a camera on that currently. It's nice to be trustworthy, trusting with people. Uh, but there comes a point where you just, the loss is not worth the trust. You're just losing so much. So we found that we're gonna need to add uh, another camera just 
focus right down there. But like I'm saying is you, you get a good point, you go from camera to camera, you look at every angle, and as they walk around, you see if you can see them or not. Now, you have saw some rolls through, through our store is that a lot of these uh, displays were not here when we set up the cameras. So the height of the pops weren't there and the cameras worked well enough where we could see the whole top half of a person and it was a turn enough. But now, you know, you just, we need so much display area that we're gonna need to add cameras because we can't see everything. Again, changing the direction will help the cameras 100% in seeing people because they're, they're shot down a line where we have the aisles in the opposite direction. Get up on a ladder, get a family member, go around the whole store, stand at every camera if you already have cameras. If you don't, start at the front of the store near the cash register. You want to have uh, a camera that's focused down on your cash register uh, because if you're going to have employees at some point, you might start out that it's just you and it may always just be you. But also, you know, it's a good uh, deterrent from anybody trying to rob you uh, that they're completely on camera right at the register. And uh, it also is good for you insurance purposes. You can see exactly how much money or near exactly how much money was exchanged uh, in a robbery. So there definitely needs to be one directly over the register. And then you want a, uh, one that does, you want one that shows all where the employees will be picking and pulling uh, expensive stuff, right? Because if something goes missing, you want to be able to go back and through the cameras and, and see, see what happened to that, that card. You may have a stock room. I do not. I have a basement and it only has one exit and entrance and it's up. It's in the back. So we have a camera set that shows the whole back area. So we'll be able to see who comes and goes from downstairs. Uh, but if you have a stock room, I suggest at least one, maybe multiple cameras in your stock room. These are all things you really have to think about that you don't think you have to think about. Like when you're setting up a store again, you get excited. It's all about getting open, getting your first sale, make a checklist. Go back through all of our videos and look at all the mistakes I made setting up my store and uh, put them down as Haven for Heroes mistakes, <laughs> one through 100. And that's your uh, check mark boxes for setting up your shop and what you should do before you open the doors. All right, so this is our system. We bought a very cheap, I got it on sale. I think it was supposed to be 500 and we got it for like 200 and something, 200 and change. It's the QC. It comes with four cameras and you can add two more so it can have six. So right now we have the four up. Here's the register shot. You can see that. You can see uh, our camera crew. Hey, wave. <laughs> yeah, that's the front door so you can see people in and out. We also get a nice little shot of people walking by uh, we had our window broken at one one time, and but it didn't pick up anybody because they actually, we think it may have actually been a rock from a car driving by, but uh, regardless, we didn't pick up what happened there. But as you can see is, we can see down the front aisle a little bit, but on these other aisles, you really can't see over the top. We have a nice shot of the back, all the way to the back door, shot of the bathroom and our, um, our office door. So you can see if anybody j goes into our office, the office has our eBay stuff in it and everything, so we don't really want people in there. But yeah, so this is a suit, like you can get into a camera system super cheap. And um, at night, if we had all the lights out, you could see that it still records and it has, they have night uh, sensors. And it just goes to like a green screen, almost like a night vision goggle kind of thing. But yeah, it's uh, we've been really happy with it. Uh, it's been running six years now. Uh, for 200 bucks, I have my money's worth. If it crapped out tomorrow, I would go buy another $200 one because, you know, if you went with a security company, it would probably cost you a, several grand just to get them to put the cameras in and then you're monitoring every month. I mean, it depends. It, if you have millions of dollars in a something that could be carried out, if you're a sports card store that has like Mickey Mantle rookies and or if you have uh, the power nine and magic maybe you do want a monitoring place that has you know thousands of dollars in uh, camera equipment in the in the place and you're paying a monthly fee 
Uh, we don't. I, you have to, uh, in our state, in New York, you have to have a fire alarm. So we do have a fire alarm and we do have a monitoring we have to pay for every month. So they, uh, that I think is worth paying for. Smoke alarm's not gonna be that good enough. You know, you get a phone call if you get an alarm. They dispatch the fire department immediately. Your, all your collectibles went up in smoke. I don't know, we'll have an, we're gonna have an episode on insurances. If you've tried to get insurance for collectibles, you'll, it is very difficult for, to get from a regular insurance company to actually ca cover the complete value of your collectibles. The insurance I have is capped at a certain number and it is so low, it would make you cringe. <laughs> you need to have some type of security. I wanna add two cameras. I may buy a second one of these because I actually would like to add four cameras. I'd like to put one out my back door, one out my front door, and at least two more inside the store. If I just buy another $200 unit, I'll be more than happy with that. But that, when you're setting up your store, you have to think about that also. And plan, when you're setting up, uh, if whatever layout plan you're using, whether you're drawing it on a piece of paper or you're doing it on the computer, um, you can put little circles on where you would like to put your cameras to cover all your thing. And then once you put all your stuff in, then I would do the line of sight with the, with the family member or friend and the ladder. And then install them. If you have a drop ceiling, super easy to install uh, these cameras uh, that we have. But all of them are, these aren't wireless, so it is all big savings, but it's gonna cost you, you know, a bit in wire. Uh, luckily, I had bought a ton of wire at an auction for next to nothing. So we wired the entire place for very cheap. That's gonna be your major cost is running the wire from the back of your store all the way to wherever you're gonna keep your camera system. Why a lot of people put the camera system right by the cash register is one is you usually have somebody up at the cash register and they can, they can watch it. But mostly it's so when people come in the store, they know right away that you have camera system. The only other part is that they also can see where the blind spots are. So you wanna make sure that there are no blind spots so that people when they come in know they're being recorded and know there won't be any place they can hide. That's it on cameras and setting up your shop. Uh, I, like I said, it's fitsmallbusiness.com. Again, we're not sponsored by them. It is just one of the resources I found that was really good. Not only did they have a, a layout planner, uh, that you could use. They also had uh, instructional videos uh, for s the different type of what they, in their experience, uh, was good for the different types of retail. They had apparel, they had um, convenience store stuff, they had all the different types of stores. I didn't see a collectible one, but we're pretty close to like a regular retail, uh, not clothing, but like a tchotchke store. So they had those in there and you can, about the different access that you need to your glass cases and stuff. So you can set it up like that. They also had um, a lot of different photographs. They had a lot of different articles. Looked like a really great website. I'm gonna start uh, digging through there and see what else I can uh, come up with there. And again, it uh, was uh, fitsmallbusiness.com. Uh, and then you just, uh, they have a great search key and you can put anything you're looking for for small business and it'll have some information on there, but definitely has the layouts. Now that you've used the layout and you've set all your fixtures out, what's gonna go into the fixtures? What's your layout? Where is it gonna be? Are, do you have Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Lorcana? What case is gonna have what? Also, your comic shelving. Where is the new comics gonna go? Where? How are you gonna do back issues? With the fixtures that you've selected, how are you gonna lay out the store? Now that you have the store laid out perfectly, so you have all your measurements, you have your 28 inches, wheelchairs accessible throughout the store, where are you gonna put the items to catch the eye to, to sell in merchandising? So what's worked for me is the kids' comics right when they walk through the door. I've set that up where not only do they see it when they first walk in, but they see it just before they walk out. So if they missed it when they came in, they won't miss it on their way out. And that's worked very well for me. I also have all the new comics very close to the register. So impulse buys for when subscribers pick up their comics for the week, they can look at it and maybe pick something else up. Then we have the pops all over the store. We find that some of the pop buyers are looky-loos. So a looky-loo will walk around the store. Uh, they'll come in, they don't expect to buy anything. 
but with the pops being throughout the entire store, it's it kind of, as they go through and they see more and more different types of stuff and genre, they see, oh, you know, Cousin Ralph, he would love to have that. And you sometimes get an impulse buy that way as they're going through the whole store. For me, I like to keep stuff together. You might not want to. I don't think that makes much sense, but that's up to you. But when you're planning your shop and you have your fixtures set, figure out where everything goes. Are you gonna sell sodas? Are you gonna sell coffee? Where's that gonna be? If you choose a place, think about it really strongly about as a customer coming in is it convenient? Is it easy to use? Is it easy to get to? Does it attract you? Like we have the big comic wall that when people are walking from outside, they can see all that color. They may not see what comic it is, but it's a big eye catcher. It brings people in, gives legitimacy to a collectible shop to have your big items where everybody can see them. Don't be afraid to have your branding everywhere. Like we have it out on the sign outside. We also have our old sign up in the store. We have it spray painted on the other side. You've seen that in every video. I love to show that off. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that. I was here till like two or three in the morning one night by myself, uh, spray painting the floors and the walls. And uh, you know, we do t-shirts and look, t-shirts, I don't know. I mean, I like them. I think they're, they're well done, but we sell them all the time. This shirt, the, the one I'm wearing in this video is not one of my favorites. Uh, it didn't sell very well, but we did sell out of it and we're on to a new shirt, which I love the design for. It's got a front and a back to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've got uh, talented people, creative people who will design something for you, you know, you can make a little bit of money on t-shirts, but also t-shirts is free advertising. People wear that everywhere. You wanna make sure you know, somewhere on there, it has your address, it has your phone number, it, it, it's just like an, it's just like a big ad. Mine doesn't have my phone number on it, but it definitely does have the uh, location. But you want to think about these things, uh, about setting up the store, and about making sure people know who you are before they leave. Uh, that's another secret, I think. You want a strong brand. I, I was trying to come up with an area, I don't have any wall space anymore. But if you can get a wall space where somebody can take some cool pictures for their Instagram and tag you in them, give them 10% off or something like that, you're looking for all these things to grow and reach. And sometimes just the setup of your store can help you do that if you have somewhere really cool where they can take some pictures with something cool and interesting. If you're gonna have a play space, definitely wanna design that in the layout and all the room that you're gonna need and how the seating's gonna be laid out. It's uh, important to keep that in mind because that also has to be ADA and compliant. If you're gonna set up tables, it's also tables measure differently. So if you put one thing on your uh, on the program, it's setting up the tables and you, you get it all set up and you're like, oh, this is great, it fits perfectly. Then you go to try to source the table and the tables are wider. You have to keep all that into consideration to make sure that it was gonna work for you. You know, you can always find me on Facebook and send me a message or a question if you don't feel like uh, comfortable leaving a comment here. You can also find me over on our Haven for Heroes channel and send me a message there. Uh, remember, keep reading comics and open a comic store.